Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Remco Rinkma, and you are watching Run It Back, the show in which we watch epic, old-school, high-stakes poker action, poker after dark, WSOP, super high rollerball. Whatever we feel like on this show, that is what we are going to watch. So please let me know in the comments if you have any questions, any requests, any ideas for guests on the show. Oh, guests on the show? Well, not today, but this Thursday, I'm going to have Jennifer Tilly on the show for a two-hour special. We're going to watch Poker After Dark with Jennifer Tilly, so get your questions in for her as well. We'll keep in tally of those and make sure to ask them, ask them to her on the Thursday show. Wow, tons of people already chiming in here in the chat. Milton, Dave, Profful, Duncan in the chat on Facebook. We have Mitch in the house and we have uh, Noise Sauce and Mr. Weitfart on uh, YouTube here with us. So thank you all so much for joining me. We're here for about a two hour show, 90 minutes, depends on how quick the action goes, but we are watching season seven of High Stakes Poker. This is episode, uh, let me see, set, uh, episode nine and 10, in case you're keeping track. All these seasons are available on Poker Go. And of course, I will keep reminding you guys, the new season of uh, High Stakes Poker is coming to Poker Go. December 16th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, episode one. It's going to be quite the event. And also, we are debuting a whole new season of Poker After Dark as well, starting on December 13th. So, plenty of reasons to subscribe to Poker Go. We have tons of new content coming every single week. We are releasing those Poker After Dark and High Stakes Poker episodes. And there's the man doing the commentary today on the show. It's Norm MacDonald. Um, if you are new to this show, please keep in mind, the only currency I ask for in exchange for providing entertainment and some High Stakes Poker action is to like this video and tell your friends, obviously. If they love poker, they should surely enjoy this show as well. I turn up the audio. When the action gets hot, we listen in, we watch, we make fun, we celebrate, maybe sometimes have some questions about the action. And maybe even, because this is so long ago, We'll guess on the winner of certain hands if the situation arises. All right, we have Stanley watching from Lewiston, New York. We have Alan in the house. We have Duncan is watching from the UK. We have Odong in the house. Plenty of people watching already. Let me know where you're watching from. I always love hearing uh, what the most international crowd in all of poker streaming, uh, where they are coming from today. All right, Mike Baxter, the big winner on the show last week. As you guys all remember, we had Mike Baxter involved in basically every hand, and he did not lose any of them. So that, of course... Almost great for him. Uh, all right, Bill Perkins is in the mix here. Rolibus Volgaris, Barry Greenstein. We've seen plenty of clashes between those guys. Barry trying to pick off a Bill in a few spots, which did not work. However, Rolibus did get to make some money off Bill Perkins when he uh, found pocket aces in a spot where he basically encouraged Mr. Perkins to raise. All right, Perkins makes the raise with ace jack. Greenstein makes the call. Let's just listen on this first hand. Let's get a vibe for the table. Let's get a little bit of a feeling for it. Small and big blinds are gone. Okay. Perkins still like a kid in a candy store. Check. Flush draw for Barry. Check, check. Flush for Barry. 3,600. Not flush draw for Perkins. Perkins bets. Betting 3,600. And Barry just mm. calls. No help. We'll check. Check. Perkins will check. He's hoping his ace high is good. Barry says it ain't so. I thought that I could do the same thing. Maybe I'm just clueless. Then again, you could be pushing me. Why did you bet so much? The point is, is you have one vision of yourself that doesn't match the reality. Can I call? And after careful analysis, Perkins will pay him off. Flush. Caught it. All right. You're pretty good for that. Barry, Barry, you know what you're doing. I had one for Barry there. To start things off, Bill Perkins not having the greatest of days. He's been all in quite a few times. A few people reminding me of the wrong title. I'm, I'm apologize. I started the wrong stream. So guess what? Technology is still not one of the, my best uh, assets here of the show. Uh, so yeah, we started with the wrong title. Jennifer Tilly will be on the show. She'll be on the show on a Thursday. So I should have 
everything figured out by then. So apologies for that. This is just my solo show. We are watching season seven of High Stakes Poker. When Jennifer joins the show on Thursday, we will be watching Poker After Dark. It's going to be featuring Antonio S. Fandiari. Uh, it's going to. It's a pretty good lineup. I think it's called Lucky Charms Week from a year and a half ago. So that's what we have in store. All right, Greenstein with the race. Let's listen in while I figure out all these uh, technical issues that I just created myself. Jillian picks up two ladies. Not that unusual, after all. Raise. Raise it. Oh, now I really think. Not a shot. Come on. Barry taking an uncharacteristically long time to go all in. That was about four seconds. 46. 46. 46 eight. Oh, close. Call. Call. You turn him over. This is the race that happens more than any other two hands in hold. All right, big all in here. Who do we want to win? Who are we rooting for? Are we rooting for Chicken Tenders, Mr. Movasian? If you're not new to the show and if you've watched the last few episodes of Season 7, Chicken Tenders is Movasian. He, I mean, I can tell the story again, but it was pretty funny when he got uh, messed up or he got mixed up with Bill Perkins and some big hands offering him Chicken Tenders along the way. Who are we rooting for? Ace, King, or Queens? The most traditional coin flip in all of poker. Pick your side. Pick your battle and let me know how you feel about it. Are you feeling? Are, are you more of a Queens player? Are you more of an Ace-King player? I am much more of a Queens player. I, th I don't think I've ever won a big all-in with Ace-King. There's a, lots of viewers. They already know. We're the ones that don't know. Yeah. Here we go. That's an old-fashioned race. Right? This is an old-fashioned race. It's a tournament hand. It's like a 57-43. Exciting hand. Yes, it is. As Julian would say, they're going to run it the normal way, just one time. Just once. Just once. Oh, my God. I'm sick. Well, you don't really want to be putting in. You might. You would have had to. Oh, if he didn't raise. Ouch. Seriously, oh. There's the ace. The drama has left. The building. drama's over. I'm going to show me a queen of spades. Half right. All right, that one goes to Barry Greenstein. Classic coin flip for 150K. No big deal. Just an old ace on the turn. Of course, it would have been much more fitting if the ace had come on the river for Barry's sake. Shout out to his book that I've read back when I first started getting into poker. Um, let me know, actually. Let's, let's talk about this today. Let me know your favorite poker book. And do poker books still have value to this day? Do you still enjoy reading poker books? You know, do you, did you, still, do you still buy poker books? Um, it's one of those things where, you know, the, the, the opinions vary a lot. It's, it's one of those things where you can probably still learn a lot from them depending on the level of player that you are so that's just that's just one of those things all right mercer here with the ace jack let's see we got lots of people ho hoping for the queens to hold we have a lot of people choosing ace king as well it's basically 50 50 just like the actual coin flip that it is um dave nichols is wondering if someone has stolen my bike no they have not sometimes they take the wheels out for a little indoor riding on the home trainer um we have simas watching from lithuania we have india in the house we have uh, chicago watching vietnam is here as well uh, Queens, New York, Houston, Texas, Belgium, Estonia. Wow, we have tons of countries represented, as always. Um, what else we have here? We have people rooting for Barry Greenstein on YouTube, big Barry fans. I would love to have Barry on the show. Let's be honest. It would be amazing to hear some more Barry Greenstein stories, and I will probably be able to make that happen. So let me see if I can uh, get the word out to Barry Greenstein to get him on this show. All right, here comes Perkins with the bet, Mercer with the call. He has the top hair. Let's go to the river. Barry looks like he just won a big hand. Huh? Look at him. What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you really look like he just won a big hand, buddy? One more shot at it. <laughs> and a quick call. Yeah, you win. You know what's nicer than yeah. hearing f it is you win. Yeah. You win no good. <laughs> you like that That's one? the best one. That's probably the best, one. The best I one. I had the you win, win once tonight. It felt pretty good. Although I was certain I was winning, so it didn't really matter. But put you on the wrong card. I know you don't. I assume you don't follow my tweets. No, I don't. I follow like 21 people. So. All right, action continues here. Season 7 of High Stakes Poker. If you guys have any questions for me, any requests, please let me know. Uh, just to remind everyone, High Stakes Poker Season 8 is coming real soon. We have 
uh, Phil Ivey in the mix. We have Tom Dwan in the mix. Um, Jason Kuhn is playing. We have tons of exciting names. John Robert Ballant, Rick Solomon. So tons of people that you guys all love to watch. I'm sure of it. I've already seen some of the new action, some of the big pots, and it's going to be pretty amazing. All right. Movasian here with the Ace-9. Mercer with the 9-8 off. This could go somewhere, depending on what that flop looks like. All right, Perkins also involved. All right, we have Italians in the chat on Facebook. I'm sorry, I don't understand it, but it sounds awesome. We have the Netherlands in the house. Um, and Dave Temple saying, The Devil Devilfish Life, Sto Life Storybook is a great read. I did read that. That's a great book. Um, uh, same for um, Mike Mattishouse's book, Check Raising the Devil. Um, th th those guys have just been through a lot in their lives, and it's uh, definitely worth a read. Julian's hoping his ace high is good. Four clubs. <laughs> you said four clubs? That's strong. That's strong. The four of spades gives him a flush draw and a straight draw. Perkins, of course, still has the best hand and an open-ended straight draw. Julian makes a big bet. Wow. Perkins is wondering if he really made the flush. <laughs> Notice how Perkins is not sure. Like he's. She sent me the bad signal again. It's funny. Perkins is basically. He basically never wants to fold, but he always considers it. But how can you go to calling if you're already like. Move, moving your chips in a certain way like he just did you're always of course folding you're never continuing because that is a total giveaway for, for whoever is uh playing against you for as far as the river action goes uh amsterdam poker king is ask, asking how remco can we get daniel alai or john juanda on season eight they were not on season eight uh, plenty of superstars on the show daniel alai only played in seasons one and two and also didn't play many hands i think maybe the tightest player that we've seen on high stakes poker um john juanda has never played on high stakes poker i love john juanda however i believe he lives in japan doesn't travel all that much and you know given the pandemic and all international travel not the easiest thing to do uh, Mark Rubin says Barry's book Ace on River is a great book the strategy may not be relevant in today's game for the insights on how to conduct yourself as a professional it is still very solid that's a great recommendation actually uh, Mark I last read that book probably back in 2007 or 8 uh, so maybe I have to revisit it again uh, if I ever want to get back into the live streets. Um, what else we got going on here? By the way, keep those comments coming. Let me know where you're watching from. I appreciate it. We have Pakistan in the house. Uh, Stanley says, let's go Steelers. Yeah, I guess there's football on today. It's a little bit strange. Or maybe it's even tomorrow, uh, some kind of daytime game because of COVID um, and lots of spread there. But everybody out of position folded. Everybody in position call. That's a good thing for you. <laughs> now you can keep the pressure on them. All right, I'm first. You're first. first You're first. You'd like to be first? King's rule. Movasian. Snowman jump in for 5,000. With the upper hand as well. Mercier calls with middle pair. All right, action moving slow here. We'll keep an eye on it and see where it goes. Movasian also makes the call with his top pair. Um, Noise Sauce is asking any interesting lineups for the new Poker After Dark. Definitely. Uh, also, by the way, 52 new episodes coming of Poker After Dark. So that means that you have a new episode every single week. And that also, um, uh, I think High Stakes Poker, as far as you know, what we're doing, what we're taping, and how it's all working, we're taping it at the Poker Go studio. We've taped a whole bunch of episodes. And I believe that... COVID permitting, we're going to tape another season in the um, in the next year, not to, you know, not, not as if we're going to wait another year or 10 years to make season nine, but season eight is coming real soon. And uh, as I mentioned, I already dropped a few of those names in there. Um, by the way, I think next week, yeah, next week, next week, I'll do a Poker After Dark themed week, uh, starting, of course, with this Thursday when we have Jennifer Tilly on the show, because... 
Poker After Dark is coming back before High Stakes Poker, and I'll be able to get some people on the show that might have played on the old seasons of uh, Poker After Dark in anticipation of some of the new ones. So pretty pretty exciting lineups there for Poker After Dark. I won't reveal them just yet, uh, but you know, you, you guys can trust me. You know, I'm a poker fan just as much as you are, so I would never be excited about lineups that aren't exciting. All right, uh, Shamin says, Happy holidays from Oklahoma. Happy holidays to you as well, my man. I, I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving in the U.S. I hope everyone else around the world uh, just had a good weekend and had some uh, time to relax and unwind. All right, here's Movasian talking. Mr. Chicken Tenders, um, don't think that's going to be too interesting. Uh, Matthew Fry watching from Nova Scotia. We have uh, Aslam saying Mercer going to win for sure. Uh, Mercer definitely a total killer at the table. Um, haven't seen Jason in quite a long time. Obviously, uh, the pandemic has slowed things down tremendously. But I, I believe that once the time is right, he'll be back in action at the high stakes. Uh, however, he did not play on the latest season of high stakes poker. Um, all right. What else we have going on here in the chat? Um Questions about the commentators of High Stakes Poker? Yes, we will announce those, I think, I think next week. Maybe on Monday, um, Tuesday. I'll see what I can do. But hopefully we can announce those as soon as possible. We are working on the commentary. We are working on everything behind the scenes. These episodes are going to be uh, cut downs. So it's not a live stream like... Uh, you know, you guys have watched on various lower stakes games. This is a big game and it's going to be um, it's going to be produced in the best possible way to make a very, very entertaining hour show for you guys to watch every single week. So you don't have to sit through, you know, seven hours in one go, because that, of course, is extremely boring. All right. All right. Here's Perkins and Greenstein again. Let's see where this goes. Standard play. Perkins raises. Greenstein goes over the top. Your friend is picking on you, man. Yeah, I noticed that. He's trying yeah, to, he he's picking on me, my stack, my whole thing. Everybody's getting out of the way. They're like, all right, here he comes. Well, you don't seem to let him down. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. I don't. I don't. I don't huh. let him down at all. Perkins calls. Diamonds will spell trouble. Again, there's a pair on the board, and Barry is up against trips. He donates 15,000. And the Oscar goes to anyone but Bill Perkins. Raise. Raise. A crying raise. <laughs> I'm all in. All in. Wow. Barry caught again with his hand in the cookie jar, as they like to say. And thus, that's how you get rid of a bully. That's how you get rid of the bully. Yeah. Fluff him. Yeah. You fluff him. Yeah. All right, Perkins, not getting the maximum value there. Maybe he could have gotten another bluff uh, street out of Greenstein there on the turn. All right. A quick little update here that I'm just getting here from one of my producers. Um, we are sending out a tweet. And you guys are the first to hear about this, so this is kind of exciting. We are sending out a tweet at 4.20 p.m. Pacific time, which is 7.20 p.m. Eastern time. That tweet is your encouragement to retweet. And uh, once that hits 200 retweets, we are releasing the full lineup of the first episode of High Stakes Poker. I believe there's a photo involved. I think we have a lineup photo of everyone standing side by side for that first episode. So keep an eye out for that. Um, among the people that retweet that tweet, I know it's a lot of word, a lot of tweets happening there. Um, we will give away a free merch bundle, like we always do. We do a T-shirt, we do a hat, we do a deck of cards. Um, what, whatever else we have laying around the office, it's going to go in the bag and it's going to get shipped to you. So, 200 retweets for a chance to win some merch and also to reveal the lineup of the first episode of High Stakes Poker Season Eight, which airs on Poker Go exclusively on December 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So keep your eyes peeled for the or for that tweet on the poker go twitter page so if you don't already follow us please go do so right now all right kings for greenstein again against baxter mercer this hand could get interesting there somewhere but it wasn't really <laughs> trying to figure it out <laughs> it wasn't coming out yeah. you, i think you're about to see that that very greenstein right oh, up right against three of a kind no, again I, I, I can say it right and the cars crash they're crashing into each other right now it's, 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 oh i get it you, you know somebody's chasing you baxter gets out of line you called I, was, it. I was foretelling what was about to happen. You were foretending. Yes. How much do you have, Barry? Started with probably uh, 140, some in that range. Wow. Bet and a raise right away. Baxter getting involved with the top pair there. Kind of unconventional from Baxter. Jason just calls. 
Wow. This could unleash Barry on this pot, given that he has no wow. spades. So does yeah. Barry. But he just calls. Told you this would happen. You did. You called it, my if friend. If Woody had gone straight to the police, this would have never happened. That'll Ooh. freeze the action. Wow. Fourth spade. Unless Nobody has spades. Gets very bold. Yes, it is Poker Go on Twitter. Keep an eye out for that. No insanity here. The single worst turn card for big action on this set. Yeah. Gotta be good. Good. Wow. Car crash. Mercer takes it down against the uh, flopped top pair of Mike Baxter and the over pair of Barry Greens. And Barry, by seeing the ace of spades on the turn, losing probably the minimum on this hand. Any other card in this hand would have gotten a lot bigger on the turn. But I don't really think I'm saying anything special there. Um, the spider has still not been located. So I'm pretty sure he lives inside my iMac in some kind of way. So yeah. I don't see, I don't see him right now. So the spider is still living here somewhere. Uh, what else we got going on here as well in the chat? Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, and Jack Knox says, Barry always seems to get crushed with these monster hands. Yeah, not the luckiest player on High Stakes Poker, as we all know. His big clashes against Tom Dwan in Season 5 were, you know, iconic. Uh, he won one, he lost one, so I guess sort of broke even on those. Movazian calls on the button. Depends, maybe. I had a set. What are you gonna do with a four <laughs> spades? Barry on the big blind. Deuce of spades crushed you. Oh. Barry must know by now he's up against three of a kind. Three wins. 30,000 run in on the spot. You want it? I, he, he lost something. Barry and, and Mike. I'm very lucky. 4,200. Jason's enjoyed. A set held up with a four spades on the board. Oh my gosh. He must have been sick when all the spades sort of rolled. Ovasian calls with middle pair. Three on the flop. Then the ace of spades. And then the ace of spades peeled on the turn. Checked around. Brick River. Checked around. A set again. This time for Haralabob. All Barry or Silent had to do was just bet 65% pot. No? You were there? <laughs> I probably fold, uh, folded Barry though. Bob bets again. Uh, like, but maybe you don't fold. Well, I think that you're more likely bluffing than he is in that spot. Well, it just shivers. Earlier to actually. Although so it, it's a harder call against you because Barry's behind you. Great. Yeah. Oh, here we Julian go. Julian gets creative again. Raises it to 27-8. Poker's a fun game. Let's see if the now nit of the know. table, Haral Bob, is going to find a way out of this hand somehow. But of course, there's only one combo of 7-9 and two bigger sets that beat him at this point. So there's no chance he's folding. Zero chance. Bob calls. I don't know how you got away from all those hands. Three of clubs makes a backdoor flush possible. If Julian had something like jack ten of clubs or queen ten of clubs, Bob is not going to raise, but there's no way he's not calling. I mean, come on, Bob. There we go. String call. Good call. Just a casual set there for Haralabob, who seems to be making every single hand under the sun. Poker is not that hard if you flop sets. I think all of us here in the chat are probably able to play a set and to make some money uh, while while doing so. Um, what else is going on here? You guys keep those questions coming. Um, Jack Knox says, hey, Remco, what's the story with Viffer these days? He even play anymore. Um, I have not seen Viffer play in a casino in a very long time. I don't know where he is. Um, 
if if I've asked him to come on the show, has not responded to that. So if he ever does want to appear on the show or get back into poker, uh, he knows where to find me. Uh, but yeah, I would love to hear more from Viffer. Um, one of the most iconic players of the, I guess, of the height of poker. I, I want to say maybe from like 07 until 2010, those three year stretch, maybe even earlier. Um, he was playing uh, really, really high stakes and doing it in a, in a dominant way. All right. Uh, we have Barry against Jason here. Ace Jack against Ace King. We raise 8,000 See, this is where if you had any heart, you'd just stick it right yeah. on it. Why, why do you need to look? Show one, show all. Well, you can't show all it. There's an action one. <laughs> he folded these right here. I just, this is the you first time I showed it. I totally expect to see two jacks on this flop. Reveal after the fold. You have about 90 behind, 80 behind? Uh, probably 90. All well, right. there certainly would have been if he'd called. Disciplined fold there by Jason Mercer. Not easy to get rid of the ace jack sometimes. Um, uh, Jeff is asking on Facebook, can I play? Of course, Jeff. If you bring enough money to the table, you can play on high stakes poker. I think the minimum buy-in for season eight was 200K. So just so you know where we're starting at. If you are watching and if you are in a position to play high stakes poker, you know, if your bankroll allows that, do get in touch with me. At Remco Rinkema on Twitter. My DMs are open. You can always reach out if you want to play. And I will bring you in touch with the people who make the lineups. So, if you were not bluffing, do reach out. The players are talking about how the game is being broadcast on direct TV in 3D. It's too bad Jennifer Tilly wasn't playing instead of Phil Locke. I'm playing your hand. Thank you. Mike, have you ever seen a movie in 3D in the movie theater? Do you know who you are? Have you ever seen a movie theater? Nev Bartos is asking, who are the amateurs on the new season? Well, I can already tell you a former baseball player will be playing on High Stakes Poker. So that is one of the players who definitely does not consider himself a professional. Um, there are more. Um, let's say, I, I think Rick Solomon definitely... Uh, plays for a living, but I, I'm not sure if we would consider him a professional from sort of the angle that we usually look at poker at. All right, Herolibus Vulgaris. Kings again. Unbelievable. Uh, Here comes Baxter. I'm just, I'm just punish myself. No. 30,000 total for these guys. You're right. Throw my hand away. <laughs> it was a donkey call in the first place. Let's see what he does. Of course, no four bets from Haralabus. Well, calls. There's Mr. Sweaty Hat. Look at that salt. This situation is kind of similar to the time he had Kings against Barry Greenstein. Wonder what he's going to do this time. String call. He calls. Wow. Big money in the middle here. Um, let me pause it for just a second here. Actually, let's see the, see the turn card because that will probably influence the action a little bit. All right, we have Kings for Haralibus uh, against Mike Baxter, who is not known to be a hyper-aggressive player. How would you play the Kings if you were Haralibus? You are in position. You know, Do you want to bet if Baxter um, uh, checks to you? Are you going to call if he bets? Like, do you, Are your Kings in trouble here because Baxter would never continue with more uh, with anything less than a really strong hand on the turn here? Uh, give me some thoughts here because clearly... Clearly, Herolibus is a very tight player, but I'm curious to hear how you guys, and I'm expecting all you guys that are watching to be super aggressive, super loose, and, you know, super sharp players. So let's hear it. Don't check behind. Just bet. That's Bob's what I was happy to see that check. Oh, he my God. He just checks. I can't believe it. Well, the eight is not in anyone's range.
Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Just a pair of kings for Heralibus. Is he the biggest nit that has ever played on high stakes poker? I'd love to hear in the comments how you guys feel about this because clearly he is taking the passive approach in every single situation. All right, Jeanette says, raise it up. And uh, Drew says, how did he not raise to see where his kings were at? Tight, tight, tight. Uh, that says, that's what Drew says. Raising where you're at is not really a thing. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to break it to you because that, of course, would just put you in a really awkward spot. Uh, Jeff says, aggressive on the turn. Um, what else do we see here? Uh, Sashi Khan says, I want to play on Friday Night Poker. That is a great idea. I am... I am confident that we are working behind the scenes on the return of Friday Night Poker. That, of course, the low stakes show, 510 buy in. And I think we should have one of you guys play on, on each one of these episodes. All right, Phil Lock with Aces. Let's see if we can get some action. Perkins in about as bad a spot as you can be. One time Nemesis Ward, round two. Yeah, I just. Almost finished. a 16 to 1 dog. There we go. We'll do it. Nid alert from Haralibus, obviously, as we all agree on in the chat. Perkins, perks up. Check. Checks. Oh, wow. What a tell. Nine. That is 9,000. Here comes the check raise. Look at those beautiful 5Ks. Player raises. Raise 21. Makes it 30,000 total. I'm on. Player moves all in. <sighs> wow. That was quick. That was very quick. We know Perkins is calling. We just don't know how many times Phil's going to want to run it. I don't want it, but I got it, I guess. So. Wow. I guess I'm allergic to nits or something. I kind of wanted you to fold. But you obviously know what I have. Guess I go home. By the way, oh, I'm sorry, you're all in, but go ahead. <laughs> no, he said he guess he goes home. He saw, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say anything, but I was gonna say when you when you're when you're done pushing your chips forward, I was gonna say something, but nothing related to the hand at all. So Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Twenty two times? <laughs> when you said when you said I guess you know what I have, I'm guessing no one has a yeah. clue what you have. <laughs> one pair. An over pair with no I have this. Yeah, the aces with the aces. Oh wow. Two times? Two times. Two times? Really? You're so sick. Yeah, two is really sick, isn't it? <laughs> Don't do it to me. Let me He's got the backdoor straight draw as well. Let's not forget about that. No way, kid. I'm a favorite. You have uh, no, less... He's got a backdoor straight draw, by the way. I got runner runner straight. I know. But anything can happen. So I, maybe it comes blank blank. Comes on the turn. Damn it, I knew you had a good hand speed flop. Yeah, I was like, yeah, wow, that's what that Which way do you we flip? Can chop it right I just want to be the first one to know. I want to be before the people right now. No, I can't do that. You know, it's mathematical. You can buy insurance. All right. I got one for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm halfway there, you know? <laughs> You're halfway there to half. Come on. Oh, oh my God. One. Well, That's really good for you. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. I might ask for three times that, depending on what this first card is. Now I'm okay with whatever comes, but you know, it's a free roll. Really, you're okay with that right there? <laughs> thank the oh, Lord, right. thank the Lord. Okay yeah. Thank the Lord. Chop yeah. it up. Chop it up, guys, uh, chop it up. How brutal. Why would you be okay with like chopping it up? Know, right? like, so it's happy really, hard, it's really hard to win anything. I, we got the antis and the blinds, you know? <laughs> Phil Locke, happy to chop the antis and the blinds and make a little bit of profit on his pocket aces. Clearly, he is not the gambler that I am because I would be so disappointed if I lost my aces there or, I mean, I feel like chopping with aces kind of feels like a loss. All right, another OG legend here on the screen. Um, let's see what else we got going on here. More people saying they would love to play on Friday Night Poker. Well, please tweet at the Poker Go account that you would love to play on Friday Night Poker. The more people we get excited for Friday Night Poker, the, the easier it's going to be to bring back this iconic show that ran two years ago on Facebook only. And we are trying, of course, bring it back. So if you want to play on Friday Night Poker, hit us up on Twitter. Let us know. It's a 510 game, so serious money involved still, but it's not as big, of course, as Poker After Dark or High Stakes Poker. Uh, Tommy Duggan says, what it do, Remco? Good to see you here in the chat. I hope that's a Kawhi Leonard reference. What it do, baby? Finally follow suit. He's straddling. I should have figured. You, you, you've been squeezing. You know what it is? You, got, you picked you that up, right, though? What's that? You picked that up that he was squeezing? 
Well, we've been kidding around with you, Phil, but we know you like to gamble. Squeeze, and I thought he might have opened 4, up. 4,900 total. Again? There we go. Look at him go. Two in a row. Now everybody wants a piece of that. All right. You have to call when I play hand, because you know if I have a good one pair of hand, I'm running with it. What oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a moment here. Call. Let's see what Barry has. All right, we're going to play this game again. It's been like two weeks since we've had a, a hand good enough to play this game. You guys know the rules. You guys know what to do. When we have multi-way action, like in this case, five ways to the flop for, for almost $5,000 a piece. Let me know who you are rooting for in this hand. Which hand is going to win? What is your favorite player? Let me know right now as we will get into a hand that is five-way with lots of potential. I'm going to go... Let me think. I'm going to go with Bill Perkins. I'm going to take the five deuce of hearts. That's my hand that I'm rooting for right now. We have five hands involved. There's 22K already in the middle. Pick your favorite hand and let's run it. Let's run it. Let's see how it goes. I know this is silly. I know this is stupid. I know it doesn't make much sense, but I love to, I love to sweat the action like this. And we're all gamblers here watching this show. So pick your, pick your favorite here and let's go have some fun with it. Yeah. Okay. Come on in the chat. Come on. Barry oh has the best it. hand in the straddle. They're, you guys are all played perfectly so far. Pretty sure. Beautiful hands, by the way. Some suited connectors here of all various kinds and sizes. And Jack-10 takes Duhamel the lead. Duhamel has top Jack. pair. Jack. Greenstein has a gut shot. And Phil Locke, Jack. an open-ended straight draw. Backdoor flush draw from Jason <laughs> as well. I see that's some options here. Check. That's the checking motion. How do you know that's what I was laughing at? Checked around to the button. You're right, by the way. That's what I was laughing at. I'm out. I lost. Jonathan fires. I lost big time. Straight draw for lock looks nice. Barry, Barry is not going to chase. Ooh. But lock will. Yeah, that's I it. Nah. Right. I was singing it too. Uh, heads up to the turn. Just a casual 52k in the middle here. Deuce on the turn. Brick on the turn. How much is it going to go for? I hope it's like 30-ish. 30-ish thousand. Oh, check behind. And Jonathan slows down. Hmm. This might go check, check again. 26,400. Lock smelling weakness pounces. I love this from Phil Lock. This is awesome. What's up, Mark Whitfield? Size ha size eight hat wearers. We have to unite. He's on a heater. Wow, Phil Lock gives it up. Twelve hundred. Good play. Yeah, never. Two queens. You wouldn't give him twelve hundred for that? Yeah. No. I'd pay him twelve hundred for that. So. Yeah, but I don't have your kind of money. <laughs> you got more than my kind of money. Yeah. Okay, on the, it's all on the table, though. That's the problem. You got triple my money. Wow. Phil Locke gets away with one. How do we feel about how Jonathan Duhamel played that hand? We got some Phil Locke guesses in the chat. Matt Whitefield, thank you so much for watching, buddy. I appreciate you with, with us. And I also think you were the first one to say Phil Locke here in the chat. I actually, Mitch said it as well. Wait, are you guys consp cons cons conspiring together? Are you guys the OG viewers of the show and you guys know more than I do or are you pre-watching these episodes so you can always be right whenever we play a guessing game all right Heraldus Vulgaris in the lead with more than half a million dollars in front of him uh, Baxter Mercer and Locke also in the green do Hommel Greenson and Perkins in the red right now by the way just to let you all know we have a lineup change coming we have Johnny Chan entering the game pretty soon and a few of these people are getting swapped out Doyle is going to join as well so don't go anywhere you're still watching Run it back, the show in, we watch, in which we watch old school poker action featuring some of your favorite characters in anticipation of the new season of High Stakes Poker Season 8 debuting on December 16. So don't miss out on that. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be really fun to have a new episode every single week. Uh, Shamin says, Greenstein should re-raise pre-flop, but he's not, and he's not going to get uh, punished for it. Poor Barry. Um, I think there was a good argument to be made for him to re-raise with the king queen there before the flop in that position but however he was in the big blind making it a bit tougher to play if he gets a bunch of callers and we all know these guys are happy to call uh, various different uh, situations all right more multi-way action coming up for all of us tight fold again jack seven of diamonds pretty nice silent mike calls
Well, expect a lot of unnecessary acting by Perkins. With this flop, he and Mercier are certain to clash. All right. How big is this bot going to get? Is Perkins going to get all in? I'm pretty sure he will. All right. While you're at it, don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Don't miss out on future shows. On Thursday, I have Jennifer Tilly joining me for a special Run It Back edition, watching some Poker After Dark action on which she featured two years ago. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Here comes the raise. Oh, no. It's just a call. Oh, Mike's already checked out of this hotel. Just hasn't turned his keys in yet. Some good guesses as well on Facebook for that Phil Lockhand. Matthew got it right. And so did a few other people. Pat on the back. That's what you win. That's the prize for winning this competition. Mercer must feel like his hand is amazing against Perkins. Wow. What is he worried about? Here we go. What is Bill Perkins worried about? <laughs> How could you bet into this flop? Why would you bet? <laughs> One of those sick hands. All in. And there goes the crying all in. Wow. Oh, that is so weird. <laughs> this is weird. How much more is it? Oh, sorry. I can't imagine I'm folding. You're making me consider it with that speech. It is, this is a good speech. Okay, okay, I call, I call. You didn't yeah, even want to know. Or no? I, have I have a king. I have a king, too. I have king 10. I have king queen. Wow. Okay. That was what the speech was for. Yeah, put um, Run it twice, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's 3D, um, you know? Do, do, do what the man says. You want to do it twice? Do it twice. Yeah. Wow. Twice for a, for a 10. Not enough for fold, anyways. Ace. Ooh, that looked oh, like a 10. Oh, that was one spot away. It was one, yeah. Uh, but I'll take one, one, one quarter. quarter. I'll take a quarter of this rock. I don't understand. <laughs> Can you uh, show me a third Once he's board? hesitated and you put your money in, I Birkins know. doubles up. When he hesitated, yeah. I felt a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. That's, a That's heavy. It's yeah, one, I, I, the best hand won that time. To start with. Almost the nuts for almost the nuts for Bill Perkins with a fair bit of acting. By the way, let me know in the chat. Do you guys like to act like that, or do you think it gives away the strength of your hand? Because personally, I don't think that's the greatest idea. Because in a way, it sort of makes it seem as though you're so after you do that all those theatri theatrics that you're super super strong. Because who's ever moving all in there on a bluff? No one, right? Come on. All right, two straddles. Big action potentially on the way again. Kids, I'm just saying there are eighty thousand dollar Range Rovers out there. Yeah, yeah I don't know sports what are cheaper. What's pro? You sent the pro out and you got the information you wanted. Yeah. I'm just gonna pull you the bunny. Phil tries to steal the straddles. Here, here he comes again. Fifty-four. Yes, double straddle. You gotta pay I mean, attention if you're a professional poker player. Oh, I didn't player. see that. Yeah. I mean, you really gotta pay attention. You're an embarrassment to the game. Okay, so it's sixty-four. <laughs> just yeah, sixty-four. <laughs> I'll, I'll allow you to take it back and just call right now. It's your last chance. No. All right, let's play. <laughs> <laughs> the battle of the 7-4 suited. It would have been great if you said yes, by the way. Round three. 7-4 against 7-4. Like we all know how this game works. When we have two hands up against each other that are of the same strength, we are going to guess on who is going to win. Give me Bill Perkins. I think this man is on a mental heater. He just not won a nice pot of Jason Mercer. I think Bill Perkins is going to take this one down. 7-4 versus 7-4. What a perfect hand to play in a cash game, especially when the stacks are deep. So who do you like in this situation, Phil Locke or Bill Perkins? Um, I'll get into some of these questions in the chat right now um, while we watch this hand. Let's see. Uh, Jeff says, I don't like running it twice. Um, I think... Um, Lap finally su uh, subscribed to Poker Go. He says, I'm disappointed with the six hour episodes instead of the actual edited footage. I think you're talking about Poker After Dark. Um, we did those live as live streams for the last two years. However, going forward, 
December 13, when the new season starts airing, it's going to be going back to episodes, a weekly episode every single week of Poker After Dark, as well as a weekly episode of High Stakes Poker, uh, also airing exclusively on Poker Go. And we, of course, have the entire database of all the old school WSOP action on there, Super High Roller Bowl, uh, Poker Masters, US Poker Open. There is literally thousands of hours of poker to watch. All right, let's see who wins this hand. I have one tie, one loss against you in the nemesis rounds. I, uh, Not in all rounds, but just the nemesis rounds. Is that the top? No. Checky. Check. Check, check. Pair for both. This might be a chop, or maybe not. Perkins says, I have an ace. Uh, this has to be the most, like, sedate This has to be, like, one of your 26,400 bets. I'm exhausted. You're yawning. <laughs> Phil says, me too. Better kicker. There we go. We got some battle here. 7-4 versus 7-4. You love to see it. Up. You win. He gives it up. All right. Nice hand, Phil. That nice one hand, goes Phil. to Phil Locke with his aggression. Takes it down. Aggression against Duhamel. Aggression against Perkins. Phil Locke is really opening up a little bit after having played tight for many, many hours. Um, let's see what else we got going on here. Daniel Kim is uh, saying, Remco, can you recommend the new season of High Stakes Poker that they show each player is running stack sizes? Yes, they will. That Yes, they do. By the way, this episode or this show is more than 10 years old. So, you know, don't don't worry about the graphics and all that sort of stuff because this is the um, old stuff, season seven. All right, we have a new lineup announced by the lovely Kara Scott. We have Johnny Chan. We have Phil Galfond. We have um, Antonio Esfaniari. We have Rolex over there across from the dealer. And I believe that is Robert Croak, Bill Klein, and Doyle Brunson in the mix. And then Phil Locke closing it out there on the other side. So new lineup, new faces, new players. Same game though, No Limit Holden. They're playing 400, 800, I believe. Let's see where this goes. We're expecting Phil Locke and Antonio Esfandiari to be up to their old tricks. We might even see a few push-ups. And kid poker Daniel Negreanu will be stopping by later. It's a lot to look forward to. I'm really looking forward to seeing Johnny Chan play. He bought in for 200000 as did all the players. Except for uh, Patrick Quinn saying that I would have more views if I didn't talk so much. Well, I'm not here for the views. I'm here to entertain you guys and to let you know about all we have to offer on Poker Go because everyone, everyone in the universe already knows that every single season of High Stakes Poker is available on Poker Go. So if you're tired of my talking, go to PokerGo.com right now and watch every single season of High Stakes Poker. Turn it up as loud as you can. Listen to Norm MacDonald only or the old seasons with Gabe Kaplan. Whatever you want to do. This show, however, is here to entertain, to have some fun with it, because, of course, this is over 10 years old. So I feel as though we've all watched this and forgotten about it. So now it's time to revisit it and to have some fun with it. All right. Locke versus Galfond. Let's see where this goes. Antonio is referring to, of course, Phil Galfond, a well-respected cash game player. This is his first appearance this season on High Stakes Poker. Nah. This is from 2011. We'll see if he can perform some wizardry with Queen-9. Almost 10 years old this footage is. Can't get it. 18,200. Wow, lock Locks again with the aggression. <laughs> over me, pal. I'm becoming a Phil Lock fan. I forgot how he gets creative sometimes. Can Galfon sniff it out? That's the question. It's an interesting line. Bluffy, bluffy? Felt like a bluff. That was definitely a bluff. Felt like a bluff. 200 to an uncertain bet. 400 to the nuts. You want to put that? <laughs> it was up your hand. weak. What? Like you couldn't get that one chip out. Well, it was <laughs> stuck under the. It was stuck under a couple of hundred. Last show. All right, Phil Locke does it again and continues to do well here on this season of High Stakes Poker. By the way, if you're just tuning in, this is running back. The only currency I accept for providing this entertainment is a like on the video. So please hit the like button on the video. We're only at 46 likes on YouTube. Come on, Facebook is crushing it. Um, smash the like button. Let's get up to 150 likes on the show today. That would really please me. So don't forget to hit that and make sure that I at least can keep, get to keep my job because I have to go to my boss later today and tell him like hey you know we only got you know only 50 likes he's like what what's wrong what are you doing wrong all right big hand big action here Bill Klein Phil Locke involved Phil Gelfond involved let's listen in it, uh, I did it voluntarily I put on a bulletproof vest and let someone shoot me 45 is a little more dangerous than really oh yeah. bad timing for Galfon. Johnny has spoken I love it Phil Galfon, the button bull 
Here we go, you know? Wow. This Antonio really just big. wants to start a fight. I think the table's going to be a little more talkative today than it was the other day. It feels like it. You know, yeah, I'm going to. If Phil gets winner, it will be. If he starts yeah, winning, if he gets stuck, he, gets... he won't say a word. If he gets stuck, he just sits true. there. Yeah, it's. I have to have talking shit. Thanks, Get Drew. Him, Bill. I appreciate it. There's one thing about it. Ohio in I the house. It's not as slow as it was the day before yesterday. No, it won't be. Wow. I like it. Good luck, is this, fifth, is this the fifth hand? Punch. Klein and Locke both opting to call. All right, a little strategy question here for everyone uh, chimed in still. Um, let me know in the chat, if you were Phil Locke or Bill Klein after this race from Galfond from the button, would you put in the four bet there to sort of, I don't know, narrow the field a little bit, maybe pick it up before the flop, maybe just blow up the pot and get it all in? Ace, King suited and Queens are probably good enough to get it all in no matter how many big blinds you have. At least I'm a gambler, so that's what I would do. Would you put in the four bet or are you okay with just flat calling and potentially, as it turns out right now, seeing a three-way pot out of position against Phil Gelfont with one more person to worry about, which goes for both Phil Locke and Bill Klein. So let me know what you think. Oh. Oh, did stuff crash? Did I break it? What is happening? I hit play and it's not going. Maybe I crashed. Maybe I crashed my VLC player. Let's see if this thing comes back and otherwise I'll just restart the player. But at least we get more time to think about this because the image is frozen and my player is not working. All right, let's see. Let's see if I can get it to work. No, nope, it's not working. See, technology is so interesting. Let's see. Well, actually, you can tell Galfon is not too happy with this. Let's see if I can just reboot this situation here. Huh. See, I've had the audio drop many times on me, but I've never seen this happen before. Let me just, let me see if I can, if I can fix this somehow. Hold on. Stay with me here, guys. I'm going to just restart this episode. No, also doesn't work. Maybe turn off VLC. VLC definitely crashed. Yeah, VLC crashed. All right, we got the white screen to death, whatever that means. I'm trying to get this thing to work again. All right, let's see. Activity monitor. Can I can I restart this without basically turning off the entire stream? All right, stick with me, guys. Uh, VLC not responding. Yeah, I know. I figured that out already. Quit that. Come on. Okay, okay. We got it to shut down. Let's restart it. I'm a genius. Come on. Work with me here, VLC player. We were in the middle of a hand. Restart playback. Does that work? Okay, okay. We're getting somewhere. Let's see if this works. You guys are just seeing it all happening in real time right now. This is what a professional production looks like. When stuff crashes, you just restart it. Let's see. Okay. And now we... Oh! And I clicked right in the moment where we were. Okay, action resumes as if nothing ever happened. I bet it's not as slow as it was the day before yesterday. No, it won't be. Wow, I like it. Good luck is this, fifth, is this the fifth hand? Klein and Locke both opting to call. Three way to the flop. That was so smooth. Good flop for Locke. So now what do we do? This is so interesting from Galfon's perspective. I recognize that flop, Antonio, when I had the seven eight of clubs. As the young folks say, Galfon C bets. Seven eight of space, have a pocket nine. Seven eight of clubs, huh? <laughs> have a pocket nine. Turbo muck you know? <laughs> for Klein. How does this guy know that? I didn't tell him. Do you really have nines? Yeah. How much? See, it, you catch him lying. <laughs> I mean, but that's amazing if he didn't know. You know what and lock about? flats. I was here. And that's that'll do it for the young person's speech. You get forty thousand dollars on to the end. Senior, senior moment. <laughs> Three of clubs on the river. Uh, Eight of clubs Six makes clubs. the straight a stronger possibility. He thought I was going to raise it and then dog it. I guess most that's people. That's big heart. I actually decided I was going to represent a club if it came, and then I chickened out. Well, that wouldn't have worked. What are you going to call me with two nines? No, I wouldn't. Have. But if I'd have had what Would I was supposed to call with I seven eight. I yeah. ship the river? Yeah. Tell you why not, bluff that one. Bold move by Galfond. Yeah. Mr. Galfond. Uh, oh, four, five, six, eight. What do you got, ace to a clubs or something? Uh. Wow. 
Would you give up your queens here? That's the next question, I guess. 53. So if you got it, you're going to bet like 180 on the river. Felt me on the second hand. If you don't have it, you win, kid. Wow. Uh, he bluffs you, kid. I flopped the set. Hundred percent. You flopped the set. Not hundred, but eighty-five. I mean, this is very Good interesting because people. clearly it shows that aggression is key. Both Bill Klein and Phil Lock misplayed their hands. I will go out on a limb and say that right now. Ace King and Queens in a in a game this deep against player this aggressive, you cannot just give up on your Queens right there. That is just. Such a strange play there. I think that if you're not willing to commit there with pocket queens against Phil Gelfond, then you probably shouldn't be on high stakes poker, right? Or am I being a little bit too harsh right now? Yeah, of course. Well, not of course. Uh, it's, I'll bet you Johnny Chan says it's of course. I bet you Jack McClellan says it's fine. Yeah. So I'll let you. I'll let you two to one on Jack, and I'll bet you even money on Johnny Chan. <laughs> He's stealing my action. How about part. this? I offered the bet, and then you jumped in on my action. Oh, you're right. <laughs> How about that? I'm a little tired. I thought huh? it was my idea, because I was getting ready to bet him, and then you were faster on the draw. I mean, obviously, we think it is, but... Uh, I'll I mean, bet I, you in that scenario. I've, I've, I've certainly played where it's not binding. All right, Galfon continuing his play. aggressive actions here. Um, three Gunner is asking how long I've been in America. I've been here for about two years, lived in Canada for three years before that, but... Um, yeah, I traveled a lot for many years, but I am from the Netherlands, as some of you guys might know. Calling with 8-5 yeah. suited. Huh. Phil Gaffond still got me on curious. Still. <laughs> curious. I am very happy to see that almost every single person in the chat said that they would four bet with Ace King and with Queens. So there you have it. We we collectively as a group are better than the players on high stakes poker. Can we all agree can we all agree on that? The chat pros and myself included are Ready to be on high stakes poker. Down and find your sass. I know it's hard, but you know it's there, right? I like to do that when I have the seven. Right. Yeah, just seven, not seven nine. I don't need a seven nine because it's a chopper. I'm crushed. He's waiting. He's gonna have seven. Galphon nine. calls. Uh oh. This Diamonds. could cost a chunk. This could get big, guys. Bet fourteen thousand. Fourteen thousand to start with. Raised to 36,000. Interesting spot for Doyle here. We are still live from my kitchen, that's correct. Which is also my living room and my gym. Yeah, hard hand to get away from. Look at a little action in this little high stakes poker season nine, huh? It's definitely starting out strong. Board pairs with queens. He's going to go for value, right? Maybe something small ish. Or not. Maybe big. Pair did not scare Galfon. A little he over bets 54,000. Uh, 54,000. Come on. 54,000. Looks bad. The there we is I folded two four diamonds under the gun. There we go. That is Phil Gelfand winning another pot here. Off to a strong start. We've seen Gelfand get punished in uh, prior seasons of high stakes poker. Did not go so well for him in season six. So he's getting some of the money back, which is uh, good to see for him. Clearly, these guys all have plenty of money to play with, but it is good to see the wealth being spread around a little bit on this show. Um, Neff Bartos asking if I've ever been to Scotland. I have not. I've been close, though. I've been to Ireland and I've been to the UK, uh, to London uh, quite a few times. But no, never been to Scotland. Would love to visit, though, in the summer when it's nice out. I hate rain. Um, Belgium in the house. Appreciate that as well. By the way, if you are just tuning in, let me know where you're watching from. I appreciate hearing from everyone. I see uh, Aloha from Hawaii, from Drew. We have Brazil in the house. Uh, like I said earlier, Ohio is with us as well. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I do this show twice a week on Tuesday. It is the 1 p.m. Eastern hour and every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And this Thursday, so that is only two days from now, I have Jennifer Tilly live on the show 
Ask her anything. We're watching Poker After Dark, Lucky Charms Week, some of the big pots that she played in that hand in that session uh, from the Poker Go Studio. So don't miss out if you are a fan of Jennifer Tilly or if you want to ask her some questions. There's going to be about a two-hour show, so 8 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. Set your alarms. Uh, that also probably means that it's coffee hour in Australia. So I'm expecting another international crowd there for the show. Telling me your story and then be like, can I invest? Can I put in 50K? You know? Ironically, there's a buddy of mine at the time and I needed cash to finish three projects oh. and I almost sold off 25% of the company. Antonio calls. At that time because I needed the cash. Thank God I didn't. Heart on the turn. Would have been like a 50 cents vitamin water deal. Line checks the nut flush draw. So tenacity pays off. I and it's good that he did. Thing. He missed. What were you over in Japan for? Did you, what was the business? Other for? products that I did. It's a lot of fun. Come on, Bill. Klein's thinking maybe his ace high is good. Bluff his shoes off. We know Phil, Bill Klein can do it. Out, like the very beginning. Me? And he calls. Uh, I was in finance, actually. After college, I worked for some car dealers and started Good out. answer. And then, Thank uh, you, sir. All right, one for Esfandiari there. Um, for the people who are new to our YouTube channel and just chiming in, every Wednesday we release a top five hands from various different shows. And the last seven weeks, we've released a top five of every single season of High Stakes Poker. The, the best hands according to me. You can hate me, you can love me, you can disagree with me all you want. Let me know in the comments. However, those are the top fives that I made for every season of High Stakes Poker. And this Wednesday, which is tomorrow, we're doing another top five. It's going to be the top five biggest pots of all time in High Stakes Poker history. I have a bit of a problem there. You might guess what's the problem. Well, the problem is some of these hands, when they were all in, they were running it twice or they took back some money. So how do I decide? what a big pot is. Does a chopped pot go into the biggest pots of all time, even if it was chopped because they were running it twice? Um, the David Benjamin hand versus Gila Liberté, that was a huge pot, but they took money back. Does that count? Let me know in the comments how you feel about what the criteria should be for the biggest pots of all time in high stakes poker history. Kind of hurts me a little, the one red card bit. Croak gets out of the way. Couldn't be aces. All right, another big yeah, hand for Los Fandiari. The last guy in the house. Appreciate it. Turkey, North Africa, Oregon, New Zealand, Montreal, Boston. Big crowd, international crowd. Antonio says, I only have ace high. And Phil Locke says, I don't believe you. I wasn't so sure what it was. Really? I only have ace high. I still don't believe you. Well, yeah, because I could have... It's kind of... I have an edge in the game and everyone else does it. Okay. I think I think he's close to... Okay. Do you believe me now? No, no, no. It'll be a little different if you just... 14,400. 14,400. Yes, I do, uh, and that's binding. Yeah, you know, edge. Yeah. Tony is asking on Facebook if this is a live game. Well, since I am able to pause it, no, it's not. This is from 2011. Mm. This is old school high stakes poker action from season seven. And you might be wondering, why are you doing this? Well, season eight is coming. I'm trying to get you guys excited for the new season of high stakes poker debuting on December 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Is Antonio going to call? Let's see. Oh, we have issues again with our audio. He does. Nines win. What's that? All right, that is one for Phil Locke. Again, appreciate the Phil Locke versus Antonio clashes all the time. Always fun to watch. Uh, if you're new to the show, please don't forget to hit that like button if you are tuning in. We have New York City, Seattle, Tulsa, Anaheim, Mexico. Oh, no, sorry. Mexia, Mexia, Texas. Oh, so you tripped me up there. Um, what else? Who else is watching? All right. Let me know if you are watching from a new place. This is the International House of Poker, dubbed by Wisco Barron, one of our regular viewers, and I think it's a funny nickname. Talk to Kara about that hand. Oh, we got more strategy analysis, which we are not interested in because this is running back. This is a fun show, and sometimes strategy can be a little bit boring. Um, <laughs> let me know if you guys have any more questions. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if I should include that Liber La Liberté hand against Benjamin because they took so much money back, and ultimately they didn't even run the board. And that hand, I believe, was over a million dollars. So kind of curious to see 
um, if I should add that into the biggest pots of all time. Um, of course, Tom Mon versus Barry Greenstein is going to be in there twice. Uh, Sammy Farah versus Patrick Antonius. That's going to be in there. Um, working hard on trying to finalize that list. But it's so tough because, like I said, so many run it twice moments in there. All right, Toronto, Canada in the house. Appreciate it. Um, uh, Salko watching from Bosnia. I've been to Bosnia. I've been to Sarajevo. And I've been to Zagreb uh, in Croatia. And I've been to Dubrovnik. In the south of Croatia, I've been to the Plivica Lakes. Um, been all around, actually. Been also been to Belgrade. Um, I took a taxi from Sarajevo to Belgrade in um, while it was snowing. It was very scary. It was very scary. It was in the middle of the night, too. Um, not fun. Um, the roads were a little bit iffy. Um, but that was probably because I was dark outside and I didn't know where I was going. Um, at least I was in the back of the car and not driving myself. Um, okay, well, if you saw, like, both whole cards... And you yeah. couldn't really play the hand ethically. Yeah. Okay. Amsterdam Poker King is asking, Hi Remco, which casino did you like the most uh, where they played a season of high stakes poker? I liked the Palms the most season two. Well, um, hate to break it to you because they always played on a um, TV set in one of those casinos. So obviously this is not in a actual suite. This is actually a TV set. Um, so, you know, a little behind the scenes there as far as how TV production works. Um, but personally, I think, you know, Bellagio is really cool. It's a cool place. Uh, it's funny that they played at South Point and a Golden Nugget. And now, of course, we're going into the PokerGo studio, which is the new home of High Stakes Poker. And let me tell you, the set looks sick. It looks really, really cool. All right, let's see where this action goes. Krogue decides to represent the king and bets. Galfon plays along. Croak remains determined. He is drawing dead. And Galfon remains accommodating. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. One of the stupidest sayings ever. <laughs> Norm MacDonald throwing some heat at Robert Croak there for making a bluff against Phil Galfond, who, in this case, sadly has... Galfond wastes a perfectly good raise. I don't think that's going anywhere. I had one more for Phil Galfon, who's dominating quite a bit. Um, Daryl says, that's a fun fact. I, I hope you're not being sarcastic, but these sets do look pretty epic. Um, Eric Peterson says, why don't you come down to Houston? This is the new Poker Boom City. I'd love to, man. Like when the pandemic is over, um, I'd love to go back to Texas. I've been to Austin for New Year's once. I love Austin, Texas. It's a great city. Um, definitely would also not mind to visit Houston. Uh, I've, I got to know a few people there, and I heard the food's really good there, so would love to visit as well. Um, we have Kingston, Ontario in the house. Shout out to the hip. Four hours of your PLL stuff now. I've watched about an hour of No Limit and four hours of PLL. Jennifer's watched about... And you're still this hopeless? Pretty much. <laughs> I guess that's not an endorsement for watching. No, I just... Ne I want to watch it. it. In a dream world, I watch two hours a week, but that's... It's been six months and I've gotten up to five hours. It's hard to sit and watch it's a hard video. Hard to sit back and watch a video? <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> the hard work. Yeah, Rolex, punish him for trying to punish trying, me. Trying, really, you know, really trying. He sees this as he told he had the button, so then yeah, he, yeah, just punish him. I, I was getting a little. Ag Uno is challenging me to heads up. I'd love to play. If you if you're willing to play stakes low enough for me, then uh, we can play in the future when the world gets back to normal in some kind of way. All right, King Queen for Bonetta against the Ace-8 of Esfandiari. Of course, Bonetta, as we can see, with top hair and the flush draw, kind of an unfair fight. What do you call it? Club check? Yeah. Flush check. 
We know Antonio likes to give money to watch dealers. A rooting, a rooting interest, eh? I wouldn't be this excited except it all started because he was just, he was just <laughs> trying to hurt me. Yeah. You did this. push up between you and Antonio, Phil? <laughs> you can crush me. You can crush me before my injury. And now it's not, not even close. Even one I tough do for Antonio to continue uh, here with just a pair of eights. Water situation. I, really, <laughs> I have No, I have pain shards come up my arm when I apply pressure. I work it every day, three, three times a day. Antonio's done with this hand. He's just thinking how much he... Hates Phil Locke. You just carry a baseball, so I'm just. You do have something there, yeah. There, buddy. I'm supposed to pretty much be constantly using this thing. Right, Banana, and Rolex. Panetta takes this one down. He's known as Rolex. I guess he was a fancy, or he is a fancy watch dealer. Um, <laughs> Wisco says, Remco, you're so well traveled. How about a TV show where you travel the world to random casinos, clubs, interviewing DJ, DJs, and the like, like to do in the Food Network or Travel Channel? I'd love to. Give me the budget, and I will travel anywhere to talk to DJs, to play in live games, to go eat all the crazy food, to go out and party, um, wh whatever, whatever you guys want to do. If there's money for it, I will definitely do it. All right, we have some more um, Legends of High Stakes Poker here uh, as a segment. Um, let's see what else we got going on. If you guys have any questions for me, please do send them in, and uh, don't forget to like this video. We still haven't hit 100 likes. It makes me really sad, but maybe you guys can help me out here and hit the like button on YouTube. Facebook, as always, Facebook is crushing, guys. I appreciate it. We have El Salvador in the house, Miami joining us, Jonesboro, Georgia, and love watching Texas Dolly. Caroline, uh, Carolyn, thank you so much for watching. Um, Matt says, scooped pots only. Wow, Matt, you're really making it tough on me for this top five biggest pots of all time for high stakes poker. If I do scoop pots only, then it really changes the game, changes the conversation, and it makes it really tough. Um, David Klinger watching from Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Now, that's the place I've never heard of. Of course, I've heard of Kentucky, but Shepherdsville sounds like a lovely place. I'm, I'm just picturing it being surrounded by lush forests and rolling hills. Let me know if I'm wrong on that one. We have Montreal and the GTA represented as well. Rolex has something to say about it. I can't fold. I don't like folding. It's no fun. You can't win if you fold. Three good looking hold em hands to the flop. Good. Anti out. <laughs> Both Chan and Locke have open ended straight draws, and Banana has a double gutter. It's always the fun. That's the fun. I'm a big that's fan. Why of that. the, that's why you buy a fishing license. Chan license. takes the lead. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you buy the fishing license. I gotta get to the river. Well, well, eventually, we you might. eventually you might. Yeah. Eventually you might. This is it decent, Doyle? Got a little pot over here, boys. Putting a lot of like nine diamonds, just worried. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Antonio, for reminding me. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, paying attention. The turn, you know? Seven doesn't change anything in reality, yeah. but on the yeah. surface, yeah. it sure looks scary. Oh, really? I've been on that. Remember big posh you beat me? Oh, God, yeah. Actually, we split it. We dropped it twice. Lock continuing. Lock says, I have a nine. 10,400. Look at these percentages, by the way. Bonetta has 80, 84% without a made hand. Chan calls. Snap call. So does Rolex. Wow. More hands call Nine this might be one of my new favorite hands. No one has anything. Lots of draws involved. But still anyone's game. And Bonetta has 84% and not a made hand. And the rest has zero because, of course, Locke and Chan are looking to chop. But that still means that someone can bluff someone and win the whole pot. Diamond. One time. Just to make it interesting? Just to make it a little interesting for the viewers at home. Four of diamonds gotta look scary. Players have to think somebody made a flush. Come on, Locke. No. Ace high. Ace high, that's a good hand. Holy. Worked out wow. perfect for Benetta. King, snap queen, call. king, queen. And a snap call. Antonio called that perfectly. Antonio called it king, queen, king, queen. If you are Johnny Chan in that situation, do you fire a bet on the river knowing that you cannot win the hand 
by checking behind. I personally would have been tempted. 70K in the middle, just you know, throw like a little 30K in there. Um, Srindi, Srindi, tough name. I'm trying to pronounce it as best as I can. Says, is this live or old videos? No, this is old. This is very, very old. This is from 2011, almost 10 years ago. But we are having some fun with it. This is running back every single week, twice a week, actually. We're doing this classic rewatch of the footage from the past. And on Thursday, I will have Jennifer Tilly on the show to watch Poker After Dark Lucky Charms Week. All right. Multiple, multi way action. Let's see where this goes. Oh, one more. Come on, Doyle. Oh, I guess Doyle folded under the gun. Four way action. Four to the flop. That's a feeling you have. Galphon hits top pair. Flush draw for Johnny Chan. Wheel draw for Croak. Four, five, six, eight. What's four, five, six, eight? Film Galifon robbed me. Not Omaha. We have Montreux, Switzerland in the house. Um, I believe that was uh, Smoke on the Water, Deep Purple, the studio where they recorded. Uh, Sweden in the house. Rick Hart, thank you so much for watching. St. Louis, Eric, in the house as well. Appreciate that. <sighs> Chan picks up more outs. Bisbee, Arizona. Gordy. Galphon pretty confident with his kings. Thank you for watching. 18, By the way, as this pot slowly develops, new season of High Stakes Poker coming December 16, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, exclusively on Poker Go. First episode has Tom Dwan in it. Spoiler alert, Tom Dwan is going to be on the first episode. And there's the diamond. Chan gets there. 31,000. 31,000. Ooh, he's taking off the rubber bands. Galphon is trying to figure out what he can beat. I don't think that's how you play a very good hand, but I don't. I think it's how you play a bad hand either. These two don't play much together. There's not much history here. Flush. Eight, six of them. Nice hand. Nice. Well, now there is. All right, Gelfond gives some money to Johnny Chan. I think Johnny Chan doesn't bluff all that often. I would have folded. But I'm also terrible, and I'm also watching from home, which makes this very, very easy. Um, Gatineau, Quebec in the house, right across the border from Ottawa. Gatineau, where there's a casino. I, I was there once for a WSP circuit event um, way back in the day, probably about six or seven years ago. Um, not friendly people in Gatineau. However, it was very cold, and I stayed in my hotel room for most of that visit. I did go to Ottawa, and I walked around, and Ottawa, Ottawa's quite a lovely town. Talk about a juicy game. There'll be lots of bluffing. Antonio loves to pick on Phil Locke's straddle. Thank you, Rolex and Doyle. Locke rooting for Rolex and Doyle. Three-way action here. Make it that much harder, you know. It's like an auto 4K. I understand. Style. We have uh, someone from Germany watch for the first time. DNTN, appreciate you joining us for the show. We're live twice a week on this channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. By the way, Antonio 93 likes on YouTube. We down. might hit 100 before the show is over. I would love to see that. Now that we've been watching this lineup for quite a while, let me know in the in the comments who your favorite player is of this lineup. Are you enamored with Phil Locke and his creative plays? Is it Phil Galfon because he's been aggressive and, you know, got away with quite a few moves there? Is it Esfandiari because he's just, you know, 
an old school legend and still playing a new school style. Or maybe you're just a Dole Brunson fan. Very much possible as well. For this lineup, though, I'm going to go with Phil Galfond, despite the fact that he just gave some money back to Johnny Chan. But definitely, um, definitely one of those things where every lineup you can have uh, a different favorite. And in my in my opinion, this is um, Phil Galfond this week. Couple of kings for Banana. Raises to 5,600. Raises 5,600. Klein picks up Ace Jack. He calls. Doyle folds. <laughs> so it folds around to Galfon Straddle. And he doesn't want to give it up. Pretty much. Or one of these. That one. I don't know. This flop could get Klein in trouble. After every hand. Every hand. He just loves so counting his money. Do you do it in tournaments too? Sometimes I go to the safe and I'm disheveled, unorganized money like Johnny has. I get anxious and I'm thinking, well, if I could win it, I'll fix it. You know? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Nice catch, that Bill. With that red thing the I don't know, it's pretty lucky. I wow, like three jacks lucky for Klein here against yeah, Bonetta. This could get ugly. Call a silly band, Phil. Silly Come band, on. Yeah. I thought Rolex has had ten, good timing. Ten, back and forth, all organized. None of the things, the, all the edges have to be out. You know? It's important. Why? Titan, Klein strings, strings them along. We got a pot. This we got a, big a pot. pot. To a waterfall. I love waterfalls. Water slides are good too. Check it. Come on, Bill. 100K. Throw it out there. Swing for the fences. You do that with your money, Phil, and I do it with my t shirts. I have about 100 t shirts that are very organized, and they're my all folded in such a way I can see this. Part Here I am. The, the girl that does my laundry gets yelled at frequently when the t-shirts aren't perfect in the stacks of styles. I see it's open open. Oh, yeah. 80K, big big bet. Not sure if Rolex can fold this. 80,000? 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80,000. Don't think I'm ahead, but I don't like folding. You got to go looking in the... Uh, I don't have a jack. That makes you any happier. It's nice. T-shirt. That's, that's all I needed to make me happy. Rolex is thinking. Press my head. Tick. Tuck. Tick. Tuck. Can he fold? I don't think he can. Tick. I fold. Good lay down. Wow. Nice hand, Mr. Bill. He does lay it down. Oh my god, two kings. Show him the queen ten. There's always a nine, right? There is always a nine. How are there so many nines? Phil Klein takes it down, does not get maximum value there from his 80K bet on the river. Quite a disciplined fold there by Rolex. Really, really good. Um, Drew is asking, can I still use the code Remco30 to get my savings on the high stakes episodes coming up next month? Unfortunately, that was a one-time deal, um, but you can use the promo code HSP uh, for um, a discount on your annual subscription. Go go check that out. Uh, Kyle is asking, what's going on? I don't know either, man. This is just high stakes poker season seven. We're just, we're just in, in it for the ride. Uh, Michael says Texas Dolly is his favorite player. Pierre says it's Antonio the Magician. Totally understand. We've got some more Antonio fans uh, in the chat on uh, on YouTube, but we also have more Gelfond love, and that's what I appreciate because I'm also a big Gelfond fan myself. All right, Jack Four suited. That's a big raising hand, of course. Speaking of gamble, love when Phil opens and Gelfond three bets. It's just so pure, you know? Gelfond raising to 10,500. It's that easy, kid. Yeah, I know. These I open season. with a non group A hand. That's, that was your first mistake. Veteran pros, you know, they just fold. Whee! Another one for Gelfond here. Back for more High Stakes Poker. You heard the man. Back for more High Stakes Poker Season 7. This is Run It Back, in case you're 
finding us for the first time on this live show. Gelfond, the big winner today. Brunson down quite a bit because, of course, the hand with flush over flush against Gelfond. This Thursday, I'm having Jennifer Tilly on the show. We're watching Lucky Charms Week from Poker After Dark, which is available on Poker Go right now. And we're going to do about a two-hour show, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss out. That's going to be... That's going to be probably the best show of the year. Jennifer Tilly is going to join us. We're going to have some fun. I might crack open a beverage. How about that? I might, I might have some wine. This, this might call for some wine. Maybe I'll, I'll text Jennifer and say, are we doing cocktails? Should I prepare something? Should I make something? Um, by the way, what's your favorite cocktail? Let me know in the chat. I'm curious. I'm, I'm very much an old-fashioned guy. Old-fashioned is my go-to drink. Money there, so I can't really see much. Something for everybody. Mm. Crowcast top pair, Klein has a flush draw, and Galfon the open ended straight draw. 5, Klein raises with his flush draw. I like this move a lot. Punish them. Galfon calls. Wow, we hit 100 likes, which means I got to keep my job. I Thank doubt this. Croak will re raise. Call. Three way action to the turn here. Turn a here. little something for everyone. One more. Flush draw, straight draw, and top here. Good luck. You have to look at the flop first. There is a straight. There is an interesting turn card, and it's for Phil Galfond. He makes the nut straight. Thanks, Brian. We're on the same page as far as drinks go. It's very important. Janib watching from Klein Pakistan. Klein continues betting his flush draw. Love it, Janib. Thanks for watching. Graham says he's a Locke fan from Costa Rica. I'm sure Locke has fans all over the world. Appreciate you watching, man. Galfon is grabbing some serious ammo. Here comes a big one. 67,000. 67,000. Wow. That sends Croak a message. I guess I have to fold. Croak lays it down, as expected. Klein doesn't know that if he hits his straight, he'll only chop the pot. This hand was part of my top Robert five. Robert Croak doesn't care who wins this pot. This hand was part of my top five of the season, in case anyone's wondering. This is one of the best hands ever, in my opinion. Klein calls. All right, big pot heading to the river. Everyone Nearly pay attention. a $200,000 pot now. Pay attention and watch what's about to happen because I remember this A hand. disappointing red card for Klein. Looks like Klein's creative juices may be flowing. They sure are. He bets $150,000. Not the best river. Maybe the worst river. <laughs> I don't want to say it out loud. It's what I was thinking. Klein's trying to represent a full house. I think I was OK. Yeah, I was fine with the spade. 150? How much time left? Called with. Galfon falls for it. Miss him. If you were bluffing, which really holy, oh, that's really, Bill. Really you are bluffing. sick. Whoa, oh, you're sick. <laughs> All right, are man. You you the one you know, sick. <laughs> yeah, I told you before yeah, even you are halfway through it. If you back, were bluffing, yeah, this would yeah. be a good time to yeah, show. Bill knew that. Bill knew the ropes. He was like, "All right, this is a nice time to show." 
All right, I'll go. 150 I'll, I'll with 10 high. But there was a nine out there. There was a nine. nine. Yep. It looked the like that's what, that's the there. only reason it made me do it. Holy He knows. That's going to be on news. One of the best bluffs in high stakes poker history. You cannot convince me of anything else. That was one of the best bluffs of the show in all seven seasons. Bill Klein pulling out the total gangster move against Phil Galfond. Oh my God, Clay Aiken, one of the best players in the history of the game, arguably, and still, of course, at the top of his game, doing his challenge. I'm not sure if that challenge is going too well, but. We are coming back on Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, with Jennifer Tilly for a special episode. We're going to watch Lucky Charms Week of Poker After Dark with Jennifer Tilly. Two-hour show. Don't miss it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Stay tuned for more because we've got a lot more coming. But this show is done for today. Next week, we will continue and watch some more high-stakes poker as Season 7 continues. Leading up to Season 8, December 16th. Don't miss out. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. The new episode will be airing. The new episode will be featuring Tom Dwan. And as I mentioned earlier, at uh, 7.20 p.m. Eastern Time, we will send out a tweet from the PokerGo account. If that tweet or when that tweet hits 200 retweets, we will announce the first uh, first uh, episode's lineup of the new season of poker or high stakes poker. Wow, that's a lot of words. Mumbo jumbo. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it as always. Thank you so much. If I did not mention your name, just come back next time and I'll try again. Mark saying the Tom Dwan bluff was better. Well, I am working on the top five best bluffs of all time. And of course, Tom Dwan versus Phil Ivey. Maybe maybe is the number one, but still, this hand will probably make it into the top five as well. Thank you all so much for watching. This was Run It Back. Come back on Thursday. Jennifer Tilly joins me. Uh, as always, appreciate the love, appreciate the shout outs, but for now, the show is done, and I'll catch you guys on Thursday.